My name is Glenda Cox. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Cape Town and I'm the project lead in sub-project 4. The aim of the research in sub-project 4 was to look at lecturers' adoption or non-adoption of open education resources in South Africa. So what we did was we went to three different institutions in South Africa, uh, the University of Cape Town, the University of Fort Hare and the University of South Africa to go and conduct our research. And we chose these institutions because they are quite different, different in size, location, uh, the type of offering that they give, uh, and also quite different, we, found, we thought from the outside, that uh, their rate of OER adoption uh, was different. So we knew at our own institution, the University of Cape Town, that there are lots of structures in place to encourage academics to contribute OER. We also knew from the outside that at Fort Hare, there seemed to be very little awareness of OER. And in terms of the University of South Africa, UNISA, we knew that there was a champion there who was putting together a strategic plan for open education resources. So those were the three institutions, uh, quite different institutions, and those are the institutions where we conducted our research. The specific research question was why do South African lecturers adopt or not adopt open education resources. So my colleague Henry Trotter and I went to visit uh, all three institutions in this project and we conducted open education resource workshops at these three institutions. We did workshops on Creative Commons and copyright as well as finding open education resources as part of the developmental aspect of this project. While we were there we completed our qualitative analysis of, of interviews with six staff members from each institution. What we found was quite interesting for us uh, when we set out. We had ideas of our own institution and imagined that at the other institution uh, similar structures would be in place to enable OER. In fact, we found that there are six particular factors that need to be in place to enable OER. And what we did with these factors was we put them into an analytical framework, what we call the OER adoption pyramid. And these factors need to be in place for OER to happen at any institution. These factors include, on the most basic level, infrastructural access, so the availability of computers, electricity, internet connectivity, these are the sort of fundamentals. Then understanding the institution's legal permission system is also very important. So looking at the IP policy, do individual lecturers have rights over their teaching materials to make them open? Or are those copyrights held within the institution? In addition, lecturers need to have the capacity to be able to find open education resources, upload them if necessary, they need to know where to look. So they need to have sort of a technical capacity and that could be personal or it could be a support unit. Then uh, another fundamental, academics need to be aware that OER is out there. Uh, and we found that often academics weren't aware, especially at the University of Fort Hare. In addition to all these different factors, there needs to be OER available in your particular area. So if there are no useful resources, open education resources of the right quality, prerequisite quality, then you won't be able to, to use open education resources or, or adapt open education resources. And then if you imagine the pyramid, at the very top of the pyramid is volition. And we felt that this was such an important aspect to consider and through the research we realized all these other factors need to be in place before volition can come into power. 
And that volition can be either institutional volition or individual volition. Institutional volition, if the institution has the legal permission over the academics teaching materials, so they own the copyright, then it's up to the institution to decide how they're going to proceed with OER. If it's individual and the individual lecturer has the permission to share their teaching materials, then it's up to them as the agents whether they are willing to share or not share. So this pyramid has proved to be a really valuable analytical tool. And from the pyramid, we've also developed readiness tables. And these readiness tables are become a very useful tool that, you, that academics and researchers can use to predict OER adoption. At this point, we have presented uh, at conferences and also produced papers on a number of different areas from our findings. So there are papers and presentations and even short videos on the OER adoption pyramid. We have also had pa written papers on the importance of institutional culture as well as the role of policy in OER adoption. So we have a number of resources that we've brought together that are available at present. Uh, what we find is very powerful from our work is the set of analytical tools that we've developed. So we have the OER adoption pyramid, we have the readiness tables, but we also have a very nice institutional culture framework. And we're hoping that all of these findings together will be very useful for researchers, policy makers, um, OER advocates around the world, not only in the global south. Uh, that these will be useful for them to uh, encourage engagement in open education resources.